All right, welcome everybody. We are back again with Achalachi, and uh, we'll be doing the last nakshatra of the series, which is Devati nakshatra. So, welcome and namaste, Achalachi. Namaste, Dr. Paiji. I want to share my screen. So, Revati Nakshatra. You can find qu quite some crowd here with, with the chakras because uh, the bijas uh, of this particular nakshatra, we can find it both in Muladhara chakra, in third eye chakra, and in the throat chakra. So I found it partic particularly really amazing and fascinating because the Revati nakshatra is nakshatra of the roads, really. Nakshatra of the road. So things coming back home also. So also us coming back to the higher consciousness in a way, but also starting the road, so going forward at, this, at the same time. Because uh, it's, it's very beautiful. We see first one of the, two, two of the actually beach mantras of Revati are here in the throat chakra, Am and Aha. And then the, another one that we see here, which sometimes is considered to be a part of Sanskrit alphabet and sometimes not, but in this particular scripture, these two were considered also the part of Sanskrit alphabet. So we see Lam, which is also residing here in Muladhara chakra. And then we see Ksham, which is on one of the petals of the third eye chakra. So this nakshatra, Revati nakshatra, really embodies uh, all these three chakras and the qualities of all the three of them which is very, very beautiful in a way when we think, when we think about that. Because again, that's the road. And when we think also that Venus is exalted here, it becomes very obvious why. Because uh, Venus uh, doesn't like to be constrained just to one compartment, one department, one person. Venus just wants its energy to flow, to be overflowing. Because true love is unconditional love. And when you already say that you just love this person and not the other, it's already conditioned love. You, you can, it's very beautiful. My guru have said it once, and uh, it's really something for all of us to think about. But when you say to a person, I love you unconditionally, you are lying. <laughs> because already the fact that you love the person is the condition. So this is very beautiful about Venus and about its true nature. And that's a true unconditional love. We can only say that we love unconditionally when we, can really, we are really capable of loving everybody. And that's why uh, I remember uh, my Guru that once went to one of the disciples of Nim Karoli Baba. And this disciple of Nim Karoli Baba, he was uh, keeping the pictures of Ram, of his Guru Dev, also of Krishna on his altar. And then he was keeping also a picture of George Bush. <laughs> so my guru then was like shocked and he was just like, why are you keeping him or your altar? You know, are you worshiping him? <laughs> and this disciple just humbly said, no, I do not worship him. But I know that the very day when I will be able to see God the same way I see it in my Guru Dev and in Rama, I will be, a I will be enlightened in that moment. And that was really a profound message, I think, for all of us to really put us down a little bit and to see on which level we all we are still and how much more we still need to work on ourselves. So coming back to Revati Nakshatra, let us chant its mantra first. So it's Om, Am, Aha, Lam, Ksham, Revati Nakshatrai Namaha. Om, Am, Aha, Lam, Ksham, Revati nakshatrai namaha. Om, am, aha, lam, ksham, revati nakshatrai namaha. So to proceed to certain verbs that are connected to that nakshatra, I took mostly these ones because the ones started from the letter A we already discussed during the Ashwini nakshatra video. And Lam we also discussed during the video with Shatavisha Nakshatra. So here Ksham means to endure, to forgive, to keep quiet also. And I think that these are one of the most beautiful also qualities of Revati Nakshatra people. They are very calm, they are very gentle, very enduring also, and very forgiving. 
And then also Ksha means ground, lightning, destruction. Ksha can mean to flow. Ksha to be abstinent. Ksha to burn also. So this particular nakshatra also has certain uh, capacity, let's say certain destructive capacity, but in a very positive sense. It can be very positive uh, in when it comes to removing obstacles. This is uh, one quality that I noticed with nakshatra people, nakshatra, revati nakshatra people, that uh, they tend to have this uh, capacity simply to let go of things that are, that are a burden on their journey. Like uh, we were talking already during some other nakshatras uh, that uh, very often the second nakshatra from any nakshatra shows like the higher level of the nakshatra right before it. So right before was Uttara Bhadrapada, which has so much burden on itself that it can't even move forward. It can even proceed further. But here we have Revati, and in Revati Nakshatra, uh, the soul finally understands, I can't keep all this burden with myself. I need to let go. I need to follow my intuition. I need to, let, I need to just put, trust God more, that he will take me where I need to go. I need to let go some of this luggage finally. And I just need to remove it from my way, otherwise I will never reach my goal. So that is a, a very prominent thing with uh, Revati Nakshatra in a way. And even when we see here, that's the picture actually of Revati Nakshatra. And it's very interesting, I found it interesting that the lady here, clearly she holds a snake in her, in her hand, but also the snake is spitting out the venom out. So this is very much, uh, much prominent quality also of this uh, Revati Nakshatra people because ultimately it's Nakshatra ruled by Mercury. It's Mahadasha Lord is Mercury. So it's also about putting all these poisons out and removing all of that and just keeping calm, keeping gentle. And that's a very beautiful quality here. But also sometimes they can be too passive. Even, even although they, are, they have already more movement energy within themselves, much more than Uttara Vadrapada definitely, they still sometimes uh, tend to be too passive and sometimes to let go of too much also and let go of uh, their ego too much. This, this is the thing that I noticed uh, very much that people who have certain troubles with this nakshatra, they will be compromising too much with people, being too gentle sometimes. And, uh, and it, you cannot say forgiving too much, but really they just, they just don't care, you know, you just offend them, they are just okay, let it be. So, so sometimes they, this being too gentle, it's okay when you are alone, for example, when Re Revati Nakshatra person is alone and somebody offends the person and the person just doesn't care at all. But what I noticed very often that when Revati Nakshatra person, for example, uh, has a wife or a husband or a friend and they go then uh, to, to the people who offend them, again, Revati Nakshatra person doesn't care, they won't fight back. And then the wife or her friend will be, why you didn't were there? Why you were not there for me, right? Why you were so passive? Why you didn't do anything? And Revati Nakshatra person will just say, yeah, but I just love everybody equally, right? <laughs> so that's, uh, it's hard to say whether it's a weak, weak side or not, really. It depends because everything is divine in a way. So we can't say it's a weak side. It's just a characteristic of Revati Nakshatra people. I find it a lot like that. And the deity here is Pushan, so you can see it's a beautiful bright gold. Ashwaji, just give me one, one second because I'm losing out on battery, so I'll quickly uh, sure, put my no charger and then... Sure, sure. Yeah, we're good now. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel that when we were talking about Revati Nakshatra, everything comes to an end, even the battery of the computer sometimes. <laughs> so, Pushan, as we were talking about him, 
he's actually the god that is taking us to our final goal to our final final destination final end and he's also this god of this uh, final nothingness so dissolving of everything because that's the, that's the final end really and he's beautiful bright god he has just two hands which is also unusual for the adityas so he has uh, just two lotus flowers in his hands and he's also sitting on the lotus flowers so again this very gentle nature of Pushan is very, very visible here. And he's re really important God in a way because he's said to remove all the obstacles uh, on the road of any person. And when we think about it, that Venus is exalted here, really when uh, we are doing things from our heart with really love and devotion, it really removes all the obstacles in our ways. Whatever we do will be really complete and successful no matter how we are doing that. So this is, I find, I find it a very beautiful message of Pushan here, really, which is showing us that this is really how it should be. And one very important quality of Pushan is he's also called the divine shepherd. And people who are born under the Abhati Nakshatra, especially, they have lots of love for animals, especially. This unconditional love aspect especially very much manifest also through love for the animals, through love for the nature. Because I think that nature ultimately is also our final destination. We come from nature and our society went very far away from nature already. But ultimately we come back there and whenever we go to the forest or even to the park when it's silent, we really experience that peace of mind, we really experience like being home. The energy of Pushan is very, very strong there. And this is why all the great sages, they were always meditating under the trees, in the forest, in the place of nature, because this is where also the Venus, the heart, the energy of devotion can reach its highest in a way. So the chakras here that we can see, uh, almost all of them are pleasant, except Manipura and heart chakra. So. This is kind of interesting because uh, heart chakra, so Venus is exalted here, right? And it's missing at the same time because uh, I feel like it's kind of forgetting itself, forgetting its own identity and just merging with everything. Maybe that's, that's the message behind that. But also interesting uh, thing here is that solar plexus chakra is missing. So, and this is particularly the quality that I notice very much with Revati Nakshatra people that sometimes this ability to take action might not be so easy for them it's easy for them to go to be on the road but uh, still this ability to take action might not be so easy for them and especially to defend themselves they like totally don't have this capacity of defending themselves too much so this was just a little bit about revati nakshatra from me dr paiji excellent excellent um... I think again, this um, this nakshatra is so beautiful because when I started doing studying about nakshatras, uh, Achalaji, many many years ago, this was the first nakshatra I picked. Typically, typically people would start with Ashwini. I started with Revati because this was the easiest for me, and I got so many uh, insights when I was uh, you know studying and meditating on Revati nakshatra. In such a beautiful nakshatra, because for many, many reasons this is very special for uh, me because it opened up so very easily to tell me, you know, what is the esoteric meaning, and even opened up so very easily to give me and grant me the journey of nakshatra. So this is one nakshatra which is we call it as a, uh, a mradhu nakshatra. Mradhu means soft. It's a very soft nakshatra very compassionate it is connected to the divine shepherd that you, you you talked about and i find that this nakshatra uh when i was uh, studying about them i found uh, it was very strongly connected to jesus christ you know the love of yes. jesus christ and again i saw the same love of uh, lord Shri krishna in this it was beautiful because i'll tell you why because the shakti of this nakshatra is called as shira Yapani shakti and what is Shira Dhyapani? Shira Dhyapani means the, the power to nourish, to protect, and to foster. And this power of nourishment is symbolized by Shira. Shira means milk. 
So the milk of the cow is nourishing and it's nurturing. There's no substitute because you know, it is only one of those very few animals which gives its milk with a lot of love. Like the, only the mother can give that love. And it's only the, the cow which gives the same love as a mother. And that's why we call it as Go Mata, Go. And uh, this nakshatra I've seen is, again, as you mentioned, is connected to Pushan, the solar deity. And Pushan is uh, the Lord who also safeguards the travelers. Okay, He is the lighthouse who shows us um, the light when we are in darkness. And he is also in many um, in, in many scholars also believe that he is called the ferryman. Pushan in the story says he's the ferryman. He, he takes the boat. After life, we sit on a boat and we cross this um, myth, mythical river called as a Vaitarini. That's what I think. And this, this Vaitarini river flows through the southern gates of uh, Yamalok. And somewhere we need to descend. It depends on, you know, the southern direction is connected to the death. And uh, Revati is connected to sea travel, boatmen, sailors, conveyance. So it is the Pushan. And Pushan, you see, it's also in today's times, I feel there's a very strong connection with uh, a lord. Because you mentioned about, uh, you know, the, the desire of this nakshatra is to become the lord of the animals. There is a lot of desire for this nakshatra to be associated with animals. Yes. Love for animals, you know, uh, veterinary doctors, I find people who take, want to a great love for animals are seen here. And the one lord which I feel which has a very strong connection with this nakshatra is Pashupati Nara. Pashu mm. means animals. Pati means the lord. Mm. Pashupati Nath of Nepal in Kathmandu. That's where his abode is. And Pashupati Nath is definitely the lord that we all want to seek to get this liberation. He is to nourish us, to nurture us, to guide us in the final path of our journey towards, you know, um, afterlife. And the sh Shiva in that form of the lord of the animals, Pashupati Nath, is a, a great way you can connect to this nakshatra. So there are so many things about this nakshatra we can talk about, we can go on and on. But I think you know, most of these have been discussed in the many videos that I've put on my YouTube channel. We have discussed this nakshatra extensively on, and we will be discussing this nakshatra also on uh, you know, KRS channel and you know, through discussions with experts and things. But I, I have a very special uh, connection with this nakshatra and also with the uh, with his love for Jesus and Lord Krishna, because both of them, one was a shepherd, or rather they don't say a shepherd, but he was always in most of the pictures you see, he has sheep around him, because there were shepherds who were there, and then you can see his love and compassion. And this nakshatra is again about Mdadu. And the same thing is Shira Dhyapani. You see Lord Shri Krishna again depicted by the cow, and he's playing the flute and the music for the cow. So this nakshatra is a beautiful nakshatra, I feel. And uh, again, I see that this nakshatra has a very strong uh, connection to elephants because, you know, just like the Bharani nakshatra, this is, a, you know, this counterpart is an elephant. And elephants are nothing but they are connected very strongly with your, uh, I mean, if you see the depiction of your cerebellum, okay, and you can see the, 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 the Ganesh in the cerebellum. The trunk of the, the thing and then the two ears are the cerebella and you know it's a very strong yeah, connection you see especially the, the ears i the think ears. that also a very important part here because it's very important nakshatra yeah so. and you see the venus being exalted here again i feel that this is a very strong connection of so showing us you know the love for god is what it's only the love for god which will give you liberation or that will at least you know what you are desiring for and this nakshatra is all about teaching you that is love god and this is again i want to say you know thank you very much again Achalaji. unless you wanted to add something else um, because this nakshatra is all about nourishment for me 
It's like Pushya, Pushya Nakshatra. You see in the fifth house, you have Pushya Nakshatra as well from this house, you know, of Pisces. And Pushya is all about nourishment, nurturing, uh, food, uh, you know, safeguarding the travelers, safeguarding. And also he was a lot of finding the lost animals. So I find a very strong theme with this nakshatra that people can find lost objects. Mm. You know, they have a very great intuitive thing to go and find lost objects. They have a very mysterious nature of preservation also with this nakshatra. Mm. Preservation of thoughts, preservation of beauty, preservation of you know your love for nature, love for the the higher realms or higher consciousness and love for God. Yeah, th this preservation aspect I really resonate with very much because I see that these people also are very much about preserving relationships. They, they are very sad whenever like any relationship needs to go fall apart or something. Uh, they, they don't like endings too much, but paradoxically, when it comes to relationships, they like this preservation part a lot. But ultimately, as God is pushing there, I think this is the, their ultimate lesson that on your way, you can't always take everybody with you. Sometimes something just needs to end on the way because this is how endings are. It doesn't mean that you can, you shouldn't love these people anymore, but simply your way doesn't go along with them anymore. And I really resonate with that a lot. So, and it's very interesting to find that this nakshatra falls in the 11th house from Taurus. And mm. Revati was the concert of Balaram who is the elder brother of Lord Shri Krishna. So if you take uh, Taurus as the, the sign where, you know, Lord Krishna was born in Rohini Nakshatra, mm. and in the 11th house is elder brother. In the 11th house, you find that this Nakshatra is where Balram, Balram's concert is Revati. So you find a very strong correlation with Balram as well, I think. And uh, the connection with the, Krishna and Vishnu and Balram. Balram. Balram was nothing but an incarnation of uh, Sheshna, isn't it? And that's why you yes. see one of the symbols you said, it is spewing the venom, uh, the venom out, the snake. Yes. So maybe there's sure. some connection with Sheshna again, because Balram is an incarnation of Sheshna. Very possible, yes. I, I don't know, I'm just thinking. Beautiful. Yeah, when you, when you just mentioned that, uh, I just now remember that uh, also in Chaitanya Lila, when uh, Balaram was reincarnated as Nityananda Prabhu and then uh, Janvi Devi was incarnated as his wife, incarnation of Revati. There's this one really beautiful story that touched me so much. Like one day when she was uh, serving uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and other great sages and other great devotees, so she was serving them with both of her hands and it happened so that her veil fallen from her head a little, which was unacceptable, right, in that times. And uh, she was such a great devotee that she just manifested two additional hands for a moment, put her veil on, and just manifested them back. So I, I think that this is very much about Revati Nakshatra, that they have this immense power inside, uh, power of the elephant, but they don't show it off so much. Like, like Bhishma Pitama, I think he said in uh, Mahabharata very beautifully that uh, elephant is, is not harming an ant, because he's weak, but out of his compassion. So, they're very beautiful. Team. Yeah. Excellent, Achalaji. Um, I cannot thank you enough. I've, every video we have done has been very special. I know this uh, this video that we're doing is uh, bringing us to this end of the series that we have been doing for the last maybe two and a half months. But thank you very much, Achalaji. I think this the series that you've done, I think is fantastic. And I think a lot of people will benefit from the mantras and chanting these mantras. There's always been questions by people, you know, what mantras should they chant? Maybe you can clarify that and then we can wrap up this. And I believe that you have also maintained always in, uh, you know, people when you're responding to people is chant the mantra in irrespective of whether you have a planet in that nakshatra or not. You know, whenever the moon transits this nakshatra, it is best to connect with this nakshatra or all the nakshatras because that brings uh, a balance on your, in your chart. And definitely you should also 
uh, you know mantras you should practice for the uh, you know wherever your moon is posited or where your mahadasha lord is posited that is obviously something that you can additionally do but i think you know i just wanted you to share some of the things just before we bring this uh, this whole series to an end is there anything that you wanted to share with the viewers I, I what I am feeling and what is my experience also that uh, you really want to bring uh, the ultimate balance in your chart. Try to do it, doing this at least for one full month every day for each nakshatra each day because this is what is going to bring the highest balance really. Because even if we uh, look at the nakshatras, at your own nakshatras in your own natal chart and through the lens of Navatara system for example, you will see that each and every nakshatra means something for you. It's not that you're connected just to it or, or that nakshatra because of the planet. Each and every nakshatra is a part of you. So even, let's say, let's assume that your moon is posited in Purva Falguni and uh, you have nothing in Uttara Falguni. It doesn't mean that Uttara Falguni doesn't mean anything for you. It's Sampat second nakshatra. nakshatra. Sampat nakshatra. Sampat, that's right. And, and you can count like that and you will see that every nakshatra means something and says something about our psychology. Sometimes even the empty nakshatras are the ones that need to be more enhanced. Yes. I notice that many times. Very true. I agree. I agree with you. So I really think that uh, the best is always to go for all of them, to honor all of them, to not make the same mis mistake that Chandra Dev did. So just, uh, Spending more time with Rohini. Yeah, exactly. Spending more time with some of the wives just because we like these qualities or just because they are more relevant to us because all qualities are important. And that's, I think, the beauty of Revati Nakshatra, actually, because that's the Nakshatra of unconditional love. It's love everybody, love every part of yourself. And especially if you are already practicing Jyotish, Vedic astrology, really try doing these mantras even a little bit every day when the moon is transiting it because it's really helpful. And even just when you chant these mantras, just before doing any reading, just before looking at any chart, you will see that things will just click just like that in your head. Just, just, because, just because you are respecting that nakshatra, it just opens up as easy as that. And that's, why, that's one more thing that I all wanted to add also. Again, the team related to Revati nakshatra, that do these mantras with love and with devotion always. Because when we just chant and repeat the mantra just like that, and don't try to bargain with the planets because that's what, what we are always trying to do. This is a very Western thing that we think, oh, I will chant this mantra and then this uh, planet is going to act the way I like. It's not like that. We need to surrender to them, love them, accept them with great humility. And rather than trying to overpower them, rather try to learn something from them. Ask them for guidance and tell them that whatever you are bringing me today, I am accepting that. Just please tell me the meaning so I can advance farther. But I will accept whatever you are going to bring me. So this is what I wanted to share about this particular practice. And of course, always before chanting the mantras, pray to your guru, pray to your <coughs> Ishtadevata. That's extremely important. Wherever there is a blessing of a guru, really everything gets much easier and much faster. I think this is... Um... The, most, the best message I've heard, uh, you know, from any Jyotish teacher. So, Achala Ji, the, the last bit, I think you can, I would ask people to go and play that, you know, what you said in the last 30 seconds or 45 seconds, you summarized everything about Jyotish, what you have to do is devotion. You know, don't trade anything with these uh, grahas. Don't say that I'm doing these mantras because I'll get something, I'll activate these you know grahas you know complete devotion to them and love for them they will shower you with whatever you you know you you this not, not what you desire but what is needed for you what is expected yes. for you you know and they will manifest that is you know what has to be done for you and what is good for you and always you know the nakshatras are all about growing and nakshatras, all of them, no, no nakshatra is bad and no nakshatra is good. They are only yeah. balancing and they're trying to bring out the qualities and they always want to grow. And how they grow is different from one individual to another individual. Based on, you know, multiple factors, how they are, uh, how they are woven in that entire complex 
system that we talked about. But Achala ji, again, thank you very much and for doing the series. I'm very grateful. And on behalf of everybody, I want to extend the you know, heartfelt uh, gratitude and love for all this that you've done for us. So thank you again. Namaste. Thank you very much, Dr. Paiji. Namaste.